Welcome, you are listening to the House of Yoga's podcast, The Pathway to Progress. We are here to inspire yoga teachers, teachers in training, and yoga lovers who are curious about the journey of becoming a yoga teacher, developing their teaching career and business, and for anyone who wants to enhance their yoga practice and get better at life. Hey, Jason here. In today's episode, I'm sitting down with Alex Manos. Alex is one of our teacher training facilitators who we bring in to lead for his specialized anatomy sessions. Alex is also a very, very good physio. He used to be Crystal Palace head physio, actually, and he's a former graduate of Ignite Your Passion 200-hour teacher training program here at Foy. Alex, welcome. It's good to have you here. Hey, Jason. It's good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. Thank you. How's your day been so far? You know, today's been actually pretty busy. This is my sixth Zoom thing of the day, so it's not normally <laughs> quite this crazy on a Tuesday, but um, yeah, some coaching and some, uh, co- yeah, just lots of stuff going on today, but I've got some tennis this evening, which will be something to go and escape from, which is good. Awesome. Nice. Zoomed out, a Zoomed out day. Sorry, just, there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, just broke up a little bit there, I think. No worries. All right, so let's jump straight in, Alex. Um, I've got the first question to, to ask you here is, how did you get into anatomy? I'd really love you to share with our listeners more about your, your background in this field and how you also got into yoga. Well, I mean, I got into, as you said, I've been a physio for 20 years now. And so, you know, anatomy makes up, um, you know, a big part of that. And, you know, without it, we, we can't really do our job. So I became, there was, I'll answer the first bit first. When I then came to the yoga teacher training, which I'll talk about how I came to that, the anatomy was obviously quite, um you know it was kind of second nature to me and I enjoyed it and also you know people kind of um, look to me in the group to try and help them out with it as well mm-hmm. and you know it's something that we are constantly learning about as well it, you know it does I mean anatomy itself doesn't change hugely but we discover new things as well so it's it's part and parcel of what I do day in day out as a physiotherapist I, you know, so there's, there's an interest there from, from a long time, you know, from a long, long time ago. You say, I, you've been, you say you've been a physio for 20 years? Yeah. How's that possible when you're only 28? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I look 28. Don't, 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 don't yeah, I look 28. Um, so I came into, so I came into teacher training. So I was, I was a bit of a, I was a bit, I was in a slightly transformational period of my life there'd been some things that had gone on and I was also looking at um career options changes what I wanted to bring in and I mean kind of like in any in, in any work that you've been doing when you've been doing something for sort of 15 16 years it can become a little bit repetitive even though I've done different things and so I wanted to bring something in and, and change and start working with people in a slightly different way and I, but I wasn't quite sure what that was I'd looked into the sort of counselling, psychotherapy route. I'd really benefited from having that work myself, but that didn't hugely appeal to me. And I wanted still to work with the physical as well as mental. And I'd started doing more yoga. And then I went, oh, maybe, maybe I should look at doing teaching yoga. And through a colleague who actually did the house of training, um, the house of yoga training as well, Andrea, who, who's a physio as well, we got in conversation and it was one of the places I was looking at and I came on board and I did it back in, God, I think I'm maybe four years qualified now, three, three to four years qualified. Mm. Um, And then I guess, you know, you, you invited me a couple of years ago to head up the anatomy part of it. That's right. Yeah, it's been it's definitely been a couple of years now, which has been awesome to have you, you know, join the team and and share your your passion and knowledge and love for this this field. And um, it's definitely been, you know, it's it's a great asset to the training for sure. Um, 
you you know you've been leading as we're saying like the anatomy modules um for a couple of years and how, how can you share a, like a an insight little insight alex into what you teach and what kind of learning goes on during those sessions you'd have to ask them about the learning i don't know how much goes in <laughs> <laughs> i can talk to you about the teaching i'm not sure about the learning um, yeah i think like you know for our listeners that perhaps they're looking at um going on the path as you have as yeah. we all have yoga teacher training or enhancing their understanding of the whole practice and obviously anatomy is a big part of that like just yeah if you could shed a little insight into you know what you teach and what what is what is spoken to and, and what what the guys are sort of up to in the training yeah of course it, it's broken down into five sections and the sections are an introduction uh, then we dive deep into so just a, an introduction into what anatomy is looking at some of the naming of things looking at kind of overall structure of skeleton, muscles, words for this, planes of movement. So just a, a real quick pit stop of how we start thinking about anatomy, um, you know, really, really down to the basics. Because there's, I mean, we must have now done probably a couple of hundred students in the two to three years that I've been doing it. Yeah. And I could probably count on two hands the people that have had some level of anatomy understanding it's certainly no more it, it probably between 10 and 20 so very small percentage so you're really going back to basics then and that's really important so that you can get a foundation of what how we look at anatomy which will lead me on to you know the sessions as they develop the then we dive deep into looking at specific areas so we look at the spine in more detail and we look at the hips in more detail two really key areas of the of the of the body especially when it comes to yoga and then we look at the third part is we dive deep into the core area and also we have a kind of whole session or at least a, a small session on the psoas um do you want to just share a little bit more around that i mean that's awesome right it's covering pretty much whole body in regards to psoas because definitely you know i remember when i first did my yoga training and i heard the word psoas i was like what the hell is psoas what is that <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those guys that are listening do you want to just just break that down a little bit more because it's so important right for, especially when we talk about yoga yeah it is so the psoas is, is one of your hip flexors in your in your in your body around your hip and your spine but it also has you know, it has other functions just uh, other than just bringing your leg up or bringing your knee up. Um, most of the time it gets a bit of a bad rap about being short and tight and we have to stretch it and stretch it, but it also has a very, very important stabilizing and, um, and strength function too. So we, 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 we dive into that because it's, it's important. You know, we, we need to remember that yoga isn't just about being flexible. It's about being you know, strong and flexible as well. So making sure that the anatomy of the psoas muscle is understood and what it does and what it doesn't do and how to, um, you know, how, how to work it safely and appropriately and look out for patterns in people that are perhaps different to what we normally think is, is really key. So we spend, like I said, we have a session on the core and the psoas. So we spend kind of 45 minutes on the psoas itself which you think doesn't sound like a lot but it's one muscle um so it is it is quite a bit you know and i've sat in some of the, your sessions and that they're there i think it's fascinating the conversation that happens and you know we've we spoke about this before in the past right alex that uh, like like you shared earlier on you were talking about going back to basics which is really important because you know when we're talking about anatomy this is it's like a whole life of learning right there's so much to learn and there's so much depth to it but in regards to a 200 hour training you know we're really just sort of would you say like scratching the surface but it's definitely enough for someone to have you know a confidence and competence around this specific subject anatomy um yeah like you know, for the guys listening, Alex, similar to what I'm saying, you know, come into a, a training and it's like, what, what, I don't even know nothing about anatomy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's really is fascinating. And I think the way that it's, it's laid out, the way you sort of lay it out has, has really um, progressed this, this, um, this part of the teacher training. Mm. 
And, and I've learned a lot, you know, I, I take it for granted, you know, it, to me, it just rolls off the tongue and I sort of, <laughs> there's a, there's a, you know, I, I've developed in the last two and a half years to realise that it really has to be kind of almost Noddy's guide um, and take no, you know, none of my own biases towards it into the, into the group. So some of the latter stuff I modified because it was, it, it was showing up to be a, a consistently tricky sticking point for, for some of the students. Um, but equally, you know, we have to be appreciative of the fact that anatomy is not easy. Like, you know, it was, you know, when I studied it 20, 20 odd years ago, like there was a hell of a lot to learn and you just had to learn it. There was no, you couldn't not learn it. You know, there was 200 odd, 300 odd muscles to learn. There was, wow. you know, 200 odd bones to learn. There was joints, to, like it was, it was deep. Um, so like I said, I've taken at times that for granted that it's, it's easy to understand, but it, it's not, it's a different language, you know, right. and that's what some of the students have said, they said, look, it's, this is a different language. So not put aside the fact that the understanding part of it, it's like, it's like learning a new language. So if you take up a new language, you actually have to learn the words first, let, let alone the meaning and then how they, um, how they then relate to movement and function and yoga and teaching. And when, so it is, I'm mindful of that now and I've probably slowed down a little bit in the teaching um, and changed it. But I guess it's important to say that the, the teaching is not designed for you to then becoming an, for them for students to then become anatomists. Okay, mm -hmm. that is not what we're about. It's Sounds about it. yeah. It's about understanding the relevance of anatomy to yoga as a practice. Um, you know, being safe and competent, uh, understanding the overall architecture of, uh, of a skeleton and a body and how it moves. And the latter is probably the most important thing. You know, how does a body move and why does it move that way? Because it's very easy just to look at a body and go, oh, well, it moves like that, but why does it move like that? And why, why doesn't it move like that? Um, I mean, yeah. that's really that's really powerful, right? It's understanding that why, and it really backs up, you know, it supports what the students are learning in regards to true north alignment, TNA, you know, safe practice from the ground up. And what you teach is just like another layer that's, that's um, supporting that. But when it, so when it comes to um, like yoga, specifically yoga, right. And specifically a safe yoga practice addicts, meaning healthy alignment and certainly longevity for the student, um, for the student, how does anatomy and, and more specifically having a better understanding of anatomy help? Like I, you sort of answered the question, but in regards to, you know, a, a, a student that's coming yeah. into a training that maybe they've been practicing for a year or a couple of years. Right. And they're starting to really become more self-aware of what their body can and can't do. Um, but what they're going to sit in the room with you and, and learn, which is amazing. Like, how would you say, um, yeah, anatomy and more specifically having a better understanding of anatomy help these students? Yeah, of course. Good question. Here's the thing. Bodies are, bodies are malleable and, and changeable, but they have their limits, okay? And there are certain limits which are not changeable. So from an individual point of view, you know, if you're practicing yoga and you feel that you're not, I'll give you a really classic example, which, which you'll know about because you've sat in on, on the sessions. You know, the hip joint, it's such a complex type of joint sure. that it is not reliant. It's, it's less reliant on the soft tissues and the muscles around it to increase flexibility. And it's more resistant to change because of the, you know, because of the um, articular surfaces, so the joint surfaces, the bones, how, how they're, how they're, put together and what their articulation is because there's a huge variance so what you find through the teacher training is that when you look at a group of 20 or 30 teacher uh, students and people go well yeah my hips don't open up like this and I've never been able to and I've tried and I've tried and I'm trying but it's not happening and they don't know why 
all of a sudden you show them the anatomy of the hip joint so well it's because of this don't keep trying you may actually be aggravating things they're like oh i just thought i was not very good at that particular pose i keep trying and it's not changing so that's really really important to know what is changeable through time and through practice and through you know development of sequences and mm. dedication and etc cetera, etc cetera, versus hey like this just isn't going to change in your body like you might gain a little bit but it's not something to force through flip that round to them when you're qualified as a teacher and being able to scan the room and go oh i see i understand why that person does this in a crescent lunge because their hip is probably orientated like this rather than well let's let's try and increase this range of movement where you may then potentially do damage okay by forcing something that or not is not designed to go somewhere right. and even you know even experienced teachers that have sort of listened into some of the anatomy um you know some of the stuff was quite new and it helped them in their practice as well i think yeah i think it's great and like you just said you know for teachers that having that understanding but actually from experience like seeing and, and really paying attention to what's happening in the room and different as we know you know everyone has a different everyone's working with different bodies um when you said that actually around the limit just then alex it sort of reminded me of from my own practice so say will pose i know there's a limit for my spine that i love the pose uh, but i know there's a limit and that is like there's no there's no further i can go in wheel pose and i, I don't want to go any further but if i did push it and i forced it i know that i'm potentially starting to experience discomfort or, or maybe a you know a longer term injury yeah but you've got a yeah i, I mean that you that's it we've already discussed it enough without without an understanding of the biomechanics of the joint in in it's pretty I mean, we don't go into the biomechanics of the joint too greatly, but it's, hey, this is the shape of some hip joints. This is the shape of some hip joints. That's going to be really good at doing those poses. That's going to be really good at doing those poses. And it's going to be equally poor at doing those. So there are some, there's almost some rules that you can often learn. I mean, there's a lot of rules in anatomy that you can learn. A lot of it is just rote learning. There's some movement rules that you'll be able to, look at and patterns and just once you've seen them enough go i get it like that's fine let, let that let that go that's why that moves in that way yeah no it's awesome uh, i'd love you to share more on the common injuries okay because obviously this comes up in trainings and it's a big question and it's something that the students really you know learn more around this around the common injuries we see in yoga students because we absolutely see injuries for sure um, I've had enough of them myself. <laughs> and the importance, Alex, of a, a modified practice to help, say, a student navigate through um, and sometimes even around these injuries and discomforts that they get from actually practicing yoga. Um, can you share a little bit more around yeah, the common injuries that we see? Yeah, I can. So we we cover this in the at the end of the at the end of the module. Mm -hmm. And the reason we cover it is because it's it it's it happens, obviously, and quite often people practicing yoga will ask a uh, will ask a teacher for advice, um, information on what on what's going on. They they may well be their first point of call for 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 this injury. Now, really important, and I, I say this a lot to to the teacher to the students that you're not a healthcare practitioner you know that's it's not your job to diagnose and to treat and to then take someone through a rehab program unless you happen to have done some you know further training etc but you know it is important that you have an awareness of what can go wrong mm -hmm. so that a you can try and take preventative measures before it potentially happens but b if and when somebody comes to you with an injury it doesn't necessarily mean they have to stop Okay, because you know a lot of people that do yoga, it's like it's a real way of life. So to lose that through an injury is is a big deal for them. Sure. And so having an understanding of the physiology behind what's happening and the and the pathology as well is important because then you can make a judgment call as to hey, I'm, I I kind of know that just modify this, but at the same time go and see a physio or you know if you're not improving with yoga in a couple of weeks, refer on and go and see somebody else. 
some of the common ones, Jace, um, you know, I, ha I had it during my teacher training was um, hamstring pain. So that there's a condition which is known in the yoga world as yoga butt. So that is uh, an inflammation around the tendon at the top of the hamstring where, where, you, where your sit bone is. Very common, uh, very annoying, very frustrating for people. It lingers, right? It lingers around. It lingers time. around for a long time. It's yeah. it's actually one of the it's one of the trickiest conditions we often see as a physio, just because it can take a long, long time to recover. And the most challenging bit about it is when people start to get it, they assume that the best thing to do is to stretch it, and it's the worst thing that you can do for it. So, a lot of stuff that we do in yoga is really designed to kind of flare that thing up. So, you know, I teach, I, I make a point of that. And, you know, a lot of people have experienced that in the, in the, in the, um, in the anatomy classes that, that we've done so far in the last few years. So they can relate to it. Yeah. And most of them then go, Oh, right. I didn't realize I should stop stretching it. Um, so that's one. Uh, we also speak about what else do we speak about? We speak about wrist injuries. Um, we speak about uh, lower back injuries or at least lower back tension slash compression and how that shows up in in certain poses, particularly back, particularly back bends, which some people are not so comfortable with you just mentioned wheel you know that there's a there's a limitation there to how much your back is willing to extend um what was the other one there was five you're testing me now um, <laughs> <laughs> there's wrist <laughs> hamstrings next by oh and shoulder shoulder shoulder, stuff, yeah, sh sh sure, shoulder yeah. sort of rotator cuff impingement type work as well and you know yoga is not you know, in terms of traumatic injuries, it's obviously very low risk. You know, there is not, um, there's not high speed involved. There's no contact involved. So it's more repetitive loading stuff. So either compressive patterns or soft tissue inflammation stuff, so tendon pain, um, things like that. Uh, you know, you can get injured doing yoga, but it's, it's rare. It does happen. Um, and it's certainly... It, it, the other thing we mentioned just to just to briefly highlight here is that yoga is quite biased toward towards certain movement patterns and certain muscle groups so as good as it is for providing symmetry left to right flow you know core stability strength all that kind of stuff flexibility it does have a um it does have a big bias towards kind of the front of the body okay so you can become a little bit over not over strong there and and so there are some preventative stuff that we speak about as well towards the end of the module which we can give to um to yoga uh, to people practicing yoga to try and balance those things out no thanks for sharing you know you talk about those five sort of common injuries but um i was you know i was speaking on a, a call actually a teach training check-in call monthly check-in call last night and one of the our students was talking about a current injury that she's experiencing in her ankle right and we were talking about how you know does that mean that you have to stop practicing or um showing up for trainings and actually of course there's so much to learn right for a student when when an injury shows up like we prefer not to be injured but actually mm. when when an injury shows up it's it's sort of telling us something it's it, it's teaching us something right and so we can actually learn so much as a student and then as teacher as well and we can share that um say lived experience through the injury and how you um heal that injury or how you modified your practice there is so much to learn from an injury although we obviously want to try and stay away from injuries there is and you know the yoga itself because you have so often space and time in a particular position and um, you go left you go right it's very it's it's very structured there's almost there's sometimes not a lot of hide in place for an injury you know you know what it's like you play you play tennis at a high level um you've worked in professional sport at a high level i have too and uh, i've played at sort of relatively high level at certain sports you can often get by with stuff you know and it doesn't quite show up because of adrenaline or you strap it up or you do something yoga almost you it, it, the body will kind of let you know yeah so you know what i mean like you'll be in a position and you've got that space and time to think about oh what's going on oh it hurts whereas 
you know, you're playing tennis and you're running for a forehand or back. You haven't got time to kind of go, oh, my I, knee just hurt. Yeah. Like you're, you're concentrated on the ball. So it is it is very valuable for um, for doing that and equally valuable for then looking at, oh, well, what do I need to do differently to maybe stop that happening? And there are, you know, probably most of the time, it's little tweaks and modifications because it's an overload stuff. It's normally something that you're not doing quite right. You know, you're not activating something well enough. Your your alignment is, is slightly off. Something's not quite um, firing or I, mean, I kind of don't really like that term, but you're not, you're not sitting into a, a, a position as well as you ought to. Um, your left and right are in balance because of what you do every day as a job, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a great place for, it's almost like a, it's almost like the perfect kind of MOT body scan of, of your body, yeah. isn't it? Isn't it just absolutely, you know, there's, yeah, I, I, you, we know that yoga is a, you know, a healing practice, especially if we start to really feel our way into our practices. Um, it's awesome, Alex. I'm sure that our listeners, you know, specifically, and we've spoke about this before, right, as well, that it's really interesting to see that students um, in trainings as well, that potentially some of our listeners will, will one day be in a yoga training, um, that some people really just connect with anatomy. It's like it's sort of a natural, you said it's a new language, but um, it is my <laughs> mind blowing and you can see that some students students will navigate or, or they towards it and they're like actually i want to learn more about this and, yeah. and some just not so much like you know it's some might be going to more towards philosophy or personal growth or anatomy so do you need to be an expert in anatomy i, I know you can answer this in one word do you need to be an expert in anatomy to, to teach yoga no, I mean I'm not an expert in anatomy. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> um, I'm I'm probably a lot better versed than a lot of people. But you know I've got way I've got loads to learn as well. But it's certainly enough to be able to teach yoga and yeah. practice yoga. Uh, and do so much. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. so much more beyond that, right? But I look I I. I you know, whilst we're speaking live here, it's been it's been awesome, and it will continue to be awesome to have you in the trainings. It's such a great asset to to the training. It's definitely added more value, as I mentioned earlier. Um, look, I at the start of this discussion, I mentioned that part of what you were, what you've been up to in your life in this career is um, you were the physio at Crystal Palace. Now, I want to bring this up because um, <laughs> I'm not an Eagle, I'm not an Eagles fan, as you know. Uh, I've got a very good friend who's an Eagles fan and his son, but um, he and actually he wants to meet you, as you know. <laughs> but um, can you just give us a, just share a little bit about that because you know it's pretty amazing to be a physio for a Premiership football team and you know um, traveling around with world class athletes. How was like how was that? If you can just share a little bit around that experience. Um... I don't know how much I can share. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, look, it's 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 a very very um, it's a very small circle. Professional sport is a very very small circle to get into. Mm. I was, um, I guess, I was fortunate. I was um, sort of determined to, to to do that. It was the the reason I got into physiotherapy. I was in the right place at the right time. I got, I, you know, I, I went into professional sport when I was a really newly qualified physio at 21, 22, uh, 22 and started working the Academy Palace and then I had a few years off and did some more training and then got the opportunity to go back into it as, you know, as the, as the head physio of the department for six years and through playoffs, uh, relegation battles, promotions, FA Cup finals, that kind of stuff. And, it's there's almost nothing like it in terms of being immersed within professional sport day in day out being part of a club it's a very unique place to be um you know jace you you know what it's like to to be on the on the professional circuit albeit you know not at slams yeah, and stuff bubble. but you, you exactly. you've lived that you know it's like it's a bubble absolutely yeah. and you know it's it's great fun it's uh, a lot of pressure. It's um, you have to have pretty broad shoulders. You have to be able to, be able to think on your feet and, and act fast and, and put out fires all the time. Mm. 
but it's a great experience and yeah. it, you yeah. learn a huge amount about look it's not I'm not going to play it down here clinically you, you you become a little bit um isolated in what you in what you learn because you tend to see the same kind of injuries with a bit of variations you don't have the plethora of diagnoses that come through the door as a private practice you're not seeing you know 100 clients a week you're seeing 23 players all the time so you get to know them very well but you do get to learn a lot about man management skills you know the the what's called the softer skills but actually the harder skills of what it takes to be a clinician and a physiotherapist you know how to deal with um you know upset footballers how to deal with frustrated footballers how to deal with you know irate managers how to deal with chairman's kind of breathing down all this kind of stuff that you know puts you I, I sort of feel that there's if you haven't done it you can't you just can't understand it yeah and i don't yeah. mean that i don't mean that jace from a from an arrogant point of view but it's you know to be engrossed in something 365 days of the year traveling coach food times injuries losses wins all that kind of emotional roller coaster it's both exciting it's upsetting <laughs> it's engaging it's uh heartbreaking at times all those kind of things all those kind of things well it's a pretty awesome experience well done and let, let, you got to be honest here you surely Surely you would have preferred to be busy at West Ham, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit that last bit? I I edit that last I'm sure we've gone over time. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding there. But uh, no, well done, mate. It's, it's, a, it's a great achievement in, in your career and long may it continue into some really exciting stuff. Obviously, you, you know, you've got your coaching side now and, and physio. Yeah. You sort of, there's a lot going on and it's, it's awesome. And thank you. Thank you for, you know, being part of Foy's trainings. It's, it's awesome. No, it's been cool. It's been good to work together again and um, give something back, you know, give something back to, to the studio and the, and the community that, that was, we haven't got time to discuss it now, but the yoga teacher training kind of led me to then do more of what I'm doing now. You mentioned coaching, so yeah. that was a very unforeseen uh, sort of benefit to, to what came about. That wasn't the reason I got into it, and obviously we've done some work together, so... Yeah, it's good to be able to, to to pay that back. Yeah, that's awesome. It's just that contribution, right? Giving back is so powerful mm -hmm. in any in any form. Like, you know, the guys listening now, or everyone that's, you know, listening to the podcast at some point, it's just when we give back and when we're contributing in any form, any context, it's it's just where we feel it seems to be where we're, we're most lit up and most fulfilled. Um, so it's all good. Listen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, and to you guys listening um yeah have have an have an awesome day week whatever you're up to and um we'll have to do it again sometime soon alex cheers jace take care thank you bye so my friends if you've enjoyed today's discussion please hit the button to subscribe to this channel and also the like button and don't forget to follow us on instagram you will find us at the house of yoga underscore thanks so much for listening and have a wonderful day